Okay, so people keep asking me about the about the Sir Major situation. Sir Major. Here's the thing. Okay, so this was this was ten years ago when I was on American Horror Story for the first time in season three. I think it was like 2012 or something. So so maybe he might have changed. I ain't seen him since then. You know what I'm saying? So maybe he changed as a person. I hope he did, because the person that he was then sucked. And you know, maybe maybe he was overcompensating. Being albino's hard. You know what I mean? He was like 25 at the time, man. Young kids, you know what I'm saying? I don't hate a lot of people. You see what I'm saying? Like I don't hate a Woo! Okay, so here's the thing. Now, I moved down here in California to be an actor. That was my goal. I didn't know how I was gonna do that shit, but I wanted it to happen. That was what I I was like, fuck it, let's go. And it's been hard, y'all. I've never not had roommates. Now, I am also albino and a motherfucker. Most of you can probably count the times you've seen an albino on TV. White albino, black albino, I don't, it doesn't matter. You don't even be seeing albino deer in the background of deer shots. You know what I'm talking about? The only time you do see albinos on TV is when they make them like it's raggedy, like powder. That wasn't even an albino dude. They just painted a motherfucker white. He was already white. You know, I mean, motherfuckers just walk up to me and be like, were you in the movie End of Days? Who the fuck are you talking to? Like, it's just one albino out here just floating around, being everywhere. But basically, albinos are just monsters and villains, okay? Until two years ago, I had never auditioned for a comedy, ever, with lines, ever. My first 15 years down here, I maybe got four auditions a year. And most of those were just weird motherfucker or specifically albino. They never wanted me, they wanted my lack of pet, you know, my, look at this. They wanted this to shake your eyes. Anyway, I'm telling you all this because I want y'all to understand that it's hard out here for a, a, a pigmently challenged person such as myself. So when I got the call that American Horror Story wanted to use me, you know what I'm saying, as a featured extra, which is like a little bit bump up from extra, I can't even do extra work because don't nobody ever need an extra albino. Extras have to blend in. Don't know how, 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 how I'm gonna do that. How, how, how I'm gonna do that. So American Horror Story calls me up. Now I had previously auditioned for them, and I did worse than I've ever done before. Partially because it was the first audition that I actually got to speak in, and partially because I was not. I'm not a great actor. But when they call back three years later, I f this is a second chance. This is a second chance. I'm, I'm, and I don't get a lot of second chances. You know what I mean? Like people don't get, like you don't know nobody who's banged two albinos, do you? People will do it once just to get it out their system. Kind of like caviar. Anyway, I fly out to New Orleans, man. Fly me out to New Orleans. I was in coach in the middle seat, but you know, still, they flew me. I think as a featured extra, I got paid like, $200 a day plus a per diem, I think. I mean, yes, I am still playing an albino guard, but that's they're not hiding from that. Like, you know what I mean? They're including albinos in, in the world, and that's something that hasn't happened for me. And they really showcased it. Everybody there was fantastic. It was a, it was a great experience, you know what I'm saying? But this motherfucker, Sir Major, mm, Sir Major, was so unprofessional and just, just all around raggedy that I felt like he was going to ruin this for not just me, but all the other albinos. Because something that people don't realize when they're dealing with, you know, acting set, with like when you're film sets and, and productions and stuff, they're big. People only see the actors, but they don't see the 300 other people who are, are on set doing everything else. These people also get paid a lot of money. And they leave after the actors, you know what I mean? Like, they work their ass off. And the PAs, the grips, the assistants have way more power than the actual actors do. So in a lot of cases, if you're an asshole to them or you're disrespectful to them, that shit will get back to somebody who has a lot more power than they do and you will be gone quickly. Because keeping 300 plus people on the same page is fucking a hard thing to do. And if you're trying to fuck that up, get you're wasting money. Also, it's just like these motherfuckers are working their asses off so hard. And he kept just being disrespectful and an asshole to the crew. So motherfucking entitled. But for what? For what? 
He kept bragging about all the shit that he had done like he was applying for a job. Motherfucker, I ain't got no job. Come to find out he had been telling people that he was another black albino dude named Sean Ross who I eventually worked with on uh, on season eight of American Horror Story. Dope dude. So now I'm running interference on him and the crew because I could already see that they're starting to get real irritated with him. And like they're like this motherfucker here. One day we were out there for three days. And I think on the second day we were filming. It's the middle of the day. It's Louisiana and I'm albino. OK, I shouldn't be outside. Him and I, because we were featured extras, got a trailer so we didn't have to hang out in the, the little village for extras. It's a small trailer. It's a little honey wagon. It's basically just room for you to kind of sit down, not really lay down. And we, we, had, we shared it. This whole motherfucking time, he is complaining because he had went out the night before, got too drunk, and he's pissed off that he just can't lay down. You ever, you ever just want to snatch somebody's voice box out? Just bang. He would not shut the fuck up. So he goes and starts bitching to the crew and assistants and, and the PAs. To finally, I'm just like, yo, take your ass in there, lie down. I'll sit outside and get you some aspirin. So I politely asked one of the assistants if they could go get me uh, a couple of Tylenol or whatever. And then I gave them to him and sat outside of my trailer so he could lay down for three hours plus. You know, I had things to do. I walked around. I, I, I perused the set. I love doing stuff like that. And every, every now and then, I, I did have this thought like, you should walk up in that trailer and stomp him the fuck out. That's what you should do. Wouldn't that be fun? But I couldn't do that because the goal today was to make it through the day so there's a tomorrow. Doing this for three days was exhausting. And on the last day of filming, I was tired. It was a, it was a long day. We were tired. We, it had been a good day of work, you know what I'm saying, about fun. But it was one of those days, the crew was exhausted. And he kept asking for shit in a very entitled way while people were on the phone. And finally, somebody, before I could get to him, somebody just snapped on him. And then he just going to act like, why, why are you mad, bro? What? I thought that was it. I thought that that, oh, well, fuck it. I, I, they're not going to call him back. So they're not going to call any of the albinos back. I know that. That's great. But apparently times have changed because they did, in fact, call me back, which was weird. Because Sir Major, Sir Major, to his testament, was not a terrible actor and um, actually was in pretty good shape. Like he was a model and he had a good, he, had, he looked good. And Corey, the other, uh, the other albino guard, uh, was actually a SAG actor at the time and had much more experience than I did. And they called me back. They didn't call Corey back because Corey had a prior engagement. He had some, he had other work. But I don't, I think they didn't call Sir Major back because... Sir Major. Like, so, so yeah, man. That's, that's why I don't like Sir Major. Sir Major. Like, I've heard, I've heard there's some other stuff in, the, in Toledo that, that have happened. You know, I don't know nothing about that or nothing like that. Um, I'm just speaking on the interaction that I had. And again, this was 10 years ago. And yes, I'm still mad. It's because, it's because I didn't want to be the bigger man in that situation. You see, I didn't want to be the bigger man. I wanted to stomp the fuck out. I wanted to act impulsively, but, but, but I couldn't because I didn't, want to, I didn't want to lose everything that I was trying to do in this acting shit. And impulsivity is what ADH do. So, so I wanted to did it. Oh, so essentially, I'm still I'm, I'm mad that he got a nap. Like, that's really what I'm pissed about. I let him get a I had to let him nap. Because I didn't also want to be blamed for his raggediness. And in the end, I wasn't. And that's what makes me mad. Because that means I could have stomped him out. I could have stalled his ass out. And they wouldn't have blamed all albinos. But I, but I didn't. And that makes me sad sometimes. Anyway, shout out to American Horror Story, man. They made me feel fantastic both times I was out there filming with them. Yeah, man. So, uh, but to Sir Major... Your mama, how about that? I don't know who the fuck you is now, but fuck that dude you was, all right? So major.